Welcome back. We'd like to step away from the numbers for just a moment. We turn to a husband and wife team of journalists and authors with years of experience in China. They're now spending time flying over the United States to get a bird's eye view of the American economy. James Follows is a longtime national correspondent for the Atlantic Monthly Magazine and author of China Airborne. It explores the extraordinary rise of China's airline industry. His wife, Deborah, is also a correspondent for the Atlantic. She wrote Dreaming in Chinese, her personal immersion in China's culture by learning Mandarin. The pair spoke in Washington recently about their latest venture, a magazine and radio series called American Futures. They fly from small town to small town, exploring the economy in a very unique perspective. It actually is incredibly beautiful to fly at 2,500 feet and get this Norman Rockwell view of America beneath you. That's it's, the it's, typical altitude, 2,500 feet. That is feet. the best altitude, because yeah. you can see the little yellow school buses and the white picket fences. And, and the, you know, the word for America in Chinese is meguo, which means beautiful country. And when you're flying over the country at that altitude, that you do, I mean, it, it almost chills up your spine of how beautiful it really is. James and Deborah recently landed here at the CCTV studios, and they discussed how they came up with the idea to explore the United States economy by plane. The purpose is to show a view of America you don't often get from the national news, a sort of local level sense of how people are adapting. And part of the inspiration for this was the time we spent in China. We lived there for a number of years and we tried to travel by bus, by train, by whatever way we could to remote parts of China. And that was so interesting, we wanted to apply the same perspective here. Um, as the other half of the husband and wife team, you're, how much time do you spend inside the aircraft, Deb? Well, uh, there are some natural limitations on this airplane. It's, it's a four-seater airplane, and there's no bathroom on the plane. <laughs> so probably three to four hours at a time is what's comfortable. And, and also given that you have to refuel and get something to eat and so forth after about that month. So time. you're six months into the trip. What have you, I guess, learned, or what has surprised you thus far in visiting America? Well, you know, Jim and I both grew up in small towns, and we have spent largely been visiting small towns around America. And I think the experience of doing that rather than seeing the bigger towns that, that you normally see um, has really brought us back to a view of America that, that most people don't get to see. It really takes you to the heart and soul of what's happening in the towns of America. It, it, it's a conversation we've had on and off, especially during the election cycle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Jim, when you talk to people, they, you've got the Democrats and Republicans, and here inside the Beltway, yeah. the, the speak is they don't like each other, and you, you hear these very uh, strenuous arguments on either side. You're talking to everyday yeah. people out in the far, far away who could care probably less about what happens right. in Washington, D.C. Has it changed your perspective? It has. And it's so interesting that the national level disagreements that are so paralyzing in national politics, you've reported it here, we've experienced it for, for decades, they really don't come up in, in, in local level. I'll give you an illustration that I did an article about in The Atlantic. You can take Burlington, Vermont, which is a really left-wing town. You know, Vermont is about as liberal as states come. You can take Greenville, South Carolina, which is the opposite extreme. Mitt Romney carried it by 30 points against Barack Obama. If you didn't know that one was very liberal and one was very, very conservative, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. It's the same kind of cooperation among universities and business leaders and civic organizations to sort of solve the problems of the community and, and develop things for the future. So you're roughly halfway through your trip. Um, you've experienced a lot. What do you hope to accomplish by the time you finish this project of yours? I guess in tangible terms, we're looking for some kind of, we'll probably have some finite product of a book or a video series or whatever. We've been doing articles and lots of web posts by both uh, Deb and me over, over the months. But I think we're, we're planning now to spend some more time in the south of the U.S. and working up through the Midwest. We were stuck by the snowstorms last month, so we have some catching up to do in, in the Midwest. It, it's an absolutely amazing uh, uh, trek that you have been on uh, via the the airways, if you will. You mentioned earlier you were partially inspired by some of your visits to China. Uh, we've got a copy of your book here, China Airborne. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you were inspired or how that came about. Yes, so, so Deb and I have spent a lot of our time outside the United States. We raised our family, our then young kids, in Malaysia and Japan. Uh, when we lived in China, Deb uh, wrote a wonderful book called A Dreaming in Chinese about how she, what she learned about China by learning Chinese language. And we just found that 
we were based for a while in Shanghai and a while in Beijing, but by traveling to almost every province and autonomous region, we just saw a different view of the scale of that country, and that made us think we need to do this back in our country too. Deb, you know, often I talk to a lot of Americans who go and visit China. Uh, for a lot of them, it's business. For a lot of others, it's to build hospitals and build schools and sort of build that cultural bridge, if you will. Uh, your experience, you've been there long enough to see it change culturally, the influence of Chinese on America and vice versa, the Americans on the Chinese. What's your thoughts as to where do we go from here in that relationship? I think a really important direction is the one that we've started on now, where there are a lot more exchanges among the students, definitely. I think I heard the figure of 100,000 Chinese students in the US now, and certainly that is going in the other direction as well. And lots of, of Chinese, Chinese language teaching in American schools. It, in my mind, it comes down to this this one-on-one -on -one exchange. As much of that as you can build as possible, so that each of you understands the other's country at a kind of street level, builds the kind of respect and and you know deeper understanding among the two countries than than you can get in in political and diplomatic negotiations. So I, I think that's where we are going, and will make the biggest difference. My uh, my producer Matt and I were talking a bit earlier, and I'm just. Curious, you're on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> you could have chosen a bus. You yes. could have chosen a car. I mean, a lot of people do choose the car option. Uh, why did you choose the aircraft, and what difference does it actually make when you uh, visit, whether yes. it's America or China or anywhere else in the world? And there's a very specific reason, apart from the fact that I really love flying, and, and it's a very particular view of the world you get from uh, from 2,500 feet. I tried to do this in China. I described one flight I made in, in, in this book. It's because. There's a lot of America that is really accessible only by small airports. There are about 5,000 small airports in this country. Every single place has one. But a lot of towns are not on interstates. They're not on rail routes. They're not in the, the bus corridors. So there are places you can get to this way, whether it's South Dakota or Wyoming or Alabama or uh, Missouri. So it's a way to sort of get places that people wouldn't otherwise see. Plus, we think it's an interesting gimmick, too. An amazing story. The husband and wife team of Jim and Deborah follows. They are exploring the U.S. and its economy by plane in their series, American Futures.